Hello everyone, I'm John. Welcome to a Shopkeep RT workshop uh, and it's actually well, not just a workshop, it's a workshop series uh, where we're going to be joining Howard Jones live from Wales and he's going to be taking you through a number of different techniques each week throughout the whole month of January. Really looking forward to it. Um, today is all about brush techniques and um, brush techniques are so important in any um, when, whenever you're looking at a painting not only the painting itself and how but it shows the confidence of the artist and the way that they applied it and if you're a, a seasoned viewer of art it can tell you an awful lot about the emotional state of the artist at the time and lots of other things like that I'm sure Howard will expand on all that anyway I'll stop talking stop rambling on over to you Howard how are you I'm good, thank you, John. So brushes, what what's so important about the brush technique? <clears throat> um, I think therein lies, in the brushwork lies the, the, I think you said it in your opening moment there, John, actually, very, very well. Um, in the brushwork lies the individual artist. Um, so what you do with a brush in your hand is very personal. <clears throat> and this is why I feel it's so important. Um, it's it's not enough just to sort of use uh, to always make the same mark consistently. So uh, with a bit of um, I'm hoping that I can show everybody here today uh, some of the methods I use for getting the most out of the brushes. So, yeah, it, it's an overlooked thing, I feel, too. I, I don't think there's enough about this out there. So. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, I'm 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 very intrigued. So um, maybe if you could put the the camera on to your overhead, if you, or whatever you want to do, over to you. Right here we go. So I'm going to get straight into this then, John. Perfect. Uh, choice of brush uh, is important. Now this mop brush, you can get to a fine point. So obviously we refer to this as the point of the brush, but then there's the side of the brush here, okay? And that's what we refer to as the, the belly of the brush. And I use the belly of the brush for about 90% of most of my loose style watercolor paintings. I only turn to the point of the brush for the last um, <clears throat> remaining, whatever, minutes, 20 minutes uh, of that painting. So I could, I could paint the, the entire scene off the belly of the brush that might be 40 minutes work only to sort of use a much smaller percentage of the finishing time, the detail work off the point of the brush. Now, what I see a lot um, when people start particularly is that <clears throat> they rely on the point of the brush, the brush much too much, you know, um, believing that that's, that that's where all the business is, is done. Um, so I'm gonna show you all these uh, methods in a moment when we start. Now, I'll show you the, the heel of the brush trick in a moment. Let me just get some paint on here for you. Um, but pushing the brush is something we we're not comfortable with. I, I've noticed, but I do that a lot, and I and I think you'll see you'll find that a lot of other watercolorists do that. Um, pushing the brush rather than just always relying on moving it around or downwards, pulling a brush. You know, we we tend to automatically pull a brush. So that's that's by that I mean making contact and pulling towards yourself, pulling towards your body. But try pushing, try landing down here and pushing that brush, because what it gives you is multiple grassy effects like this. You know, uh, you know, that, that I, I remember the days when when I was trying to create grass effects, I, I would take a rigger brush and I'd be there all day. Just, I, I want that watery mix. I, I can go to the to this edge of my palette where the water is. If I want a drier, heavier delivery that's going to stick to this already wet area I can come up here where there's no water pick up a bit of fresh paint and I can enhance these marks that I'm making with something much dry incidentally the brushwork here is exactly the same for both uh, the brushwork for the watery stuff was a, a hard push down okay I'm pushing I'm, I'm putting considerable let me just get that back in View. I'm putting considerable downward pressure. You can see the, the fibers bending, okay? But look how the um, even a really wet loading of the brush still dries out like that when you press down really hard, okay? Um, and the way, as I say, I, I paint is if you put the brush down now on your paper surface, anywhere you like, okay? This is how the brush should move across your painting, not 
if you pick it up, there's a t the brain wants you to hold the brush like a pen. It just ought to, we're so used to picking up these objects and turning them around in our hand without even thinking about it, thinking that we've got a pen in our hand. You've got to fight that uh, that off. That's a that's a sort of discipline of, that you've got to overcome. So look at the edge that you leave when you're working off the belly of the brush. You, you're never going to be able to create that if I were to turn to the point of the brush. You get different effects which are, which we can use later. I will turn to the point of the brush for, for, for other effects. But at this stage, this this beginning, this this opening, where you're sort of opening your account, you're just getting your washes down. You, you really, it, it's really a good idea to stick to the belly of the brush. Just often while I'm doing these, um, as I say, I'll use the cheap brush for this because you get less precious about damaging it. And you can push this brush uh, around you're never going to do more damage than it's already you know I do lose fibers off it um, when the painting is dry and only when the painting is dry I, I, I get take those fibers off yeah. the only time I choke down on a brush and I call this choking down on a brush where you're holding it by the fell as though you're holding a pen is when you're doing that calligraphy for calligraphy work that de fine detail work at the end of your painting that's the only time and it's a far less percentage of use compared to what you use elsewhere for the entire painting uh, the, the more you work on your brush each brush the more versatile the more flexible you will be and the quicker you will work and trust me speed is quite a big thing when painting in the loose style Yes, no, that's that's great. And just just with this sample painting that you've just done there that you've you've knocked together, I know you've put a put a mount on it. But I mean, it's incredible just to demonstrate brush techniques, but you can see all the different textures. The brushwork has really created textural forms uh, within the painting, which look fantastic. Um, and, and so all those different techniques that you've just gone through today, and I know uh, it, this hour has gone past so quickly, I don't know what yeah. everybody else thinks, um, but it's it's fascinating. And I think it will give lots of people food for thought, um, hopefully after this session, to go and experiment and explore, and uh, hopefully you all enjoyed it. Um, this was our first class of four, and it's wow. going to be a fascinating series. And next week we are working on values so um and another really really important thing when you're planning your painting and thinking about how how it works with the lights and darks and 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 all that stuff so i'm really fascinated to see what what howard uh explains to us then as well but that was really great howard uh thank you so much for uh, running and, and i'm sure there's as you said at the start there's there's loads more that you could probably cover and maybe we'll do a, a follow-on series yeah. or something yeah um because there's, there's always so much more that you can you can talk about um trina said this class has been fabulous howard's demonstration of what the brushes can do and how to hold them is really valuable i'll practice these and i think i can see some of what he's shown today will work with a painting that i'm currently working on uh, mm. many thanks to john and howard thanks trina um marianne said not a question but this has been great and learnt a lot that i will now try it's helped me think about how to loosen things up so thank you thanks right. Marianne. Right. um alessandra said oh gosh yes it flew by uh thank you loved it very useful uh, and looking forward to the next one aurora said uh great moment on using my brushes excellent uh oh great aha moment on using my brushes <laughs> uh, uh thank you well worth my time Trina said, I knew it was going to be a great series. Howard's just fab. <laughs> he got a fan there. <laughs> oh, uh, and uh, absolutely brilliant from an anonymous person. Roberta said, really informative. This encourages experimentation, which is always great. And I, I think, it, yeah, it is. It's, it's good. And I think one of the things that Howard recommended right at the start, actually, is maybe just go. You'll always have your go to brushes. But go to something that you don't normally use and just mm. give it a go and um, experiment with it. And maybe try just using one brush for that you wouldn't normally use for the entire painting and see what happens. It's, yeah. you know, it's all about experimentation and you might learn something new that you can then bring to a future painting that you, you do. So I think I think that's fantastic. Howard, have you enjoyed yourself? Absolutely, John, as always.
Good, good. Uh, well, I'm really looking forward to next week as well. So until next time, it's obviously goodbye from me. Thanks for joining us, everyone. And goodbye to Howard. Thank you so much. Cheers, folks. Cheers, everybody. Bye. Big round of applause. Hey. Take care. Bye.